Praise the Lord. Really we were talking about um, the Terry night on Friday. We were talking about how we pick up our phones and run and call sister, brother, mommy, daddy without calling the Holy Spirit first. He's the one we should always call. Praise the Lord. Praise the King of Glory. For you to really understand, um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter number two. We always hear about the Holy Spirit, the Pentecost, and all that. But to really understand, we have to read Acts chapter one first. Praise the Lord. I uh, will just summarize a little bit because um, we don't have the whole day. The fruit of the Holy Spirit takes <coughs> it takes weeks to finish. But, uh, talking about the Holy Spirit because we cannot really preach on this. We can only talk about him. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the King of Glory. Hallelujah. Now, it's coming to a, a completion of what Jesus was doing. And this time was when he had finished, rose from the dead, shown himself that he's really true God in flesh and in spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, those that were going with him, even at this time, some of them did not really still believe him. Because when he was start, start talking to them in chapter 1, verse um, uh, 5, they, um, they were talking about the spiritual, uh, the earthly throne and stuff like that. But verse 8 of chapter 1 says that, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this folks, praise the Lord. Now it's time to show what you, they have been learning. Praise the Lord. And to be able to do, to show the world that the, uh, the, the, those that did not even hear about him, what Jesus did and who he really is, he had to prepare them. Praise the Lord. It was going to send them out into the world. But before then, we have to prepare. We cannot just go to um, begin to do your PhD without starting from uh, primary school, grade school, and go on and go on and gradually get to your PhD. Praise the Lord. It takes time. Now, let's go over to chapter number two. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. Verse one in uh, chapter one, verse verse fourteen also says, "All this continued with one accord in prayer and supplication." He said they should go wait at a certain place. Go wait in Jerusalem until I send the power from on high to empower you to do my work. Because he knew what was going to come out as they just went out, the wolves, the lion would have swallowed them and put fear in them not to be able to speak about Christ. But he had to spiritually empower them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, verse 2 of chapter 2. And suddenly there came in sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And, they, and there appeared unto them flowing tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the King of the earth. Amen. Speaking in tongues is not a competition. Now, the word says, if you would repeat with me, as the Spirit gave them utterance, as the Spirit directed, as the Spirit comes into you and propels you to do this, which is right, you do not force yourself to do it because that is human and it will not last. Anything that is not of God does not last. Praise the Lord. So, as they began, it began to happen as the prophet Joel um, talked about in second, uh, Joel chapter 2 verse 28. It's a prophecy that came to pass. Joel chapter 2 verse 28 says, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall
shall prophesy. Your young men, old men shall bring dreams, young men shall see visions, praise the Lord. That's the beginning. By the time we get to um, the New Te the Old Testament, all of them will be fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the beginning of that outpouring. As this happened, because they're waiting in one accord. This one accord did not mean this one is in the church, has his or her phone in the hand, and uh, the other lady is over there, is making the list to go shop for groceries, <laughs> and the other one said, ah, ah, to use my meal. I've not eaten days ago. Uh, I can't go this thing. I said, let me just go out. They were in one place with one mind. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is what we Christians should do when we come to church. We should come to church and put expectation that the Holy Spirit will do something for mm -hmm. us each day that will come out. Let the demand on the Spirit of God to do something for it. They start expecting. Christ said they should sit and they obey and they start. And of course, what we talked about happens. Praise the Lord. And all that that were around there, of course, they started mocking them, thinking that they were drunk at one. Because they began to speak with every person there, spoke with tongues, different tongues. Different tongues. They didn't force themselves, it just came on them because the Holy Spirit, the cloak of tongues, uh, as a fire, was upon them. They were sealed. So it bubbled from the inside out. It flowed like, was flowing like rivers of living water out of them. The spirit was ministering out here. So the people were laughing, oh, this, this disciples don't mind them, they're all, all drunk and listen to them talking in our own language, praise the Lord. But we remember Peter was a great apostle, a great disciple of Christ. Sometimes he was very bold, but after he denied Christ, said, I don't know who they remember the crucifixion and uh, the passion of Christ. What happened when Christ was brought to the the, 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 uh, the high priest? He denied him. And the cock crew, three times like Christ said, praise God. This Peter, who ran, outran the apostle that Jesus loved, that son of that uh, uh, John. This same Peter was still not himself. But after the Holy Spirit came upon them, now Peter was bold enough to stand up and address the people. Praise the Lord. This Peter was able to stand and tell them we are not drunk. Okay, let's look at verse 37. This is the effect of Peter's sermon. He preached a mm. sermon that we're not drunk. This same Jesus that Christ sent, he's the one that you guys crucified. He's the same one that rose again. He's the same one that will come again for us. He said, John the Baptist baptized in the water, but this one baptized with the Holy Spirit. He preached on the power of Jesus Christ until he began to prick the heart of the people that were there. The heart of those that fall and drunk. So the effect of sermon, Peter's sermon, what I, I wrote down in my law paper is um, it made them to realize who Christ is. Made them to realize about Christ and what he was doing, praise the Lord. Yeah. Repentance. How can we get saved? How can we know him? How can we get to know this Christ? We are sorry for what happened. Baptize us so that we can get to be like him. Then there was that repentance and there was baptism. And on that very day, when the 120 were in the place receiving the Holy Spirit, that same day, the Lord used Peter to preach and he brought 3,000 people to know Christ and they were baptized. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now we have, if you want to um, read later, we can have, I can write it down. I wrote it, the promise of spirit baptism. You can see.
find it in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, Mark 10, verse 38, John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39, and Galatians chapter number 14. So we're going to read from 42 to 47. Let's see what it says. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Praise the Lord. Receiving the Holy Spirit after baptism, after repentance, after confessing Christ, you're baptized, you receive the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it comes immediately, the evidence of the, the, the repentance. When the Holy Spirit comes, there's evidence that you will begin to speak in tongues. But it does not come in all cases. Praise the Lord. We will talk about the tongue, we will speak about the tongue sometimes. Because some tongues are the ones you just edify yourself. Like you pray and you, 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 you are weak and you just begin to speak in tongues and your spirit takes in to begin to be uh, empowered. Praise the Lord. Then, there's another tongue that is, uh, what is it for? It's for the church, the visitation of the church. To get this to the apostles, the prophets. And we will talk about that in another time, praise the Lord. And what I'm trying to say here is that after they receive the Holy Spirit, they did not just go to their bed and lie down. They kept gathering together. They kept praying. They kept fasting. They kept supplicating unto God for all that that did not have. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 43 says, And he came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now, remember what Christ said that when he lived, what he is doing, greater will we do when we receive him and he baptizes us in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. 45 says how they sold their things, they came together and did everything. But 47 is praising God and having favor with all men. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Gives you favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be said. Remember that word. Such as should be said. Praise the Lord. Praise the King of Glory. Hallelujah. I think, I think I've summarized it now. Expecting contribution. It's not for you 
people were speaking this stuff because the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they appeared that the physical, physical manifestation, also spiritual manifestation. The first physical manifestation is the tongue that came like fire, and the heart that is moving, and that is what attracted people. to say, what is going on in that place? And they came in to see what is going on. But then the tongue that came upon the people, they are speaking in the languages that people can hear. Example, I'm a Yoruba woman. I don't understand Igbo. I'm a Yoruba woman from, from a village. I'm not a Chinese. These people were speaking in a language that if it is this person, if you are speaking in Chinese and you are from a city, then you don't, you never learn how to speak Chinese. Then you will attract some people to come and say, how did you get that? What is going on? And that is exactly what happened. And in fact, it kind of attracted people to this particular to what happened. And they said, it is the word of God. And when they speak that word, they are not just speaking a word of language. They are speaking a word that is proclaiming the glory of Christ who just died. They are proclaiming, they are doing so, they are asking people to come to Christ. And that is why they are able to gain the number of people that they gain. But nowadays, all we do is speaking in this language that is not making people, it's not identifying the word of God, it's not letting you to learn anything. It's a secret. And that is the reason why I saw when they did it. They asked Paul the question, what about the tongue? And he told them, look, the language, what, what is the is for somebody to speak a language that you don't understand? You don't need to know if they're pressing you or they're pressing you. What of that? He said, if a stranger comes to this place and somebody is speaking in the language that they don't understand, he said they can walk out because they don't understand it. So, to me, I feel like Christian needs to try. We can call ourselves Christian and we feel the devil is here. The word is, if you are speaking in tongues and if you cannot translate what you are saying, then don't speak it. Because the Spirit of God is not an author of confusion. Mm -hmm. If you speak it, you should be able to say to many of us. And if you are speaking it, there is nobody around here to, to translate them what you are speaking is this. Because the Spirit of God is half made. And the reason why they, they heard it is because they hear what was being said. And that's why they came to Christ. Not because you are speaking in any language that people understand. A lot of people flex their muscles by speaking in a language that people don't understand. It's Jewish. And that is not the story. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
Mm. Because you, whatever you do, you will be accounted for. You will account for. You don't be the judge and live what to be the judge. Concentrate on yourself and let the spirit of God do what he wants to do. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. And also, Paul the Apostle was not even at that meeting on Pentecost. 
But you hear it when he says, and what are the bells of that? I, 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 I speak in tongues more than all of you. So the Spirit of God still works day by day. Now let us, and Pastor will take over. Remember, this is the beginning of the church. People are just going. So some people will obviously mistake what they are saying for what was happening. But it talks about tongues, it talks about languages. My commentary here says the gift of tongues or languages was not given to edify the church, nor as a result of being baptized in the Spirit. Those are two different things. Rather, it was the result of being filled with the Spirit to accomplish a particular purpose, and that is preaching the gospel to all people. And you rightly said it, when they were speaking, people who didn't even know the language were hearing what spoken in their language, because that was the purpose from God to show them that he has power to speak any language to anyone so that they can understand. But at the same time, when we are praying in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is putting something in my heart that I cannot find what to speak it. And if I'm gathering in a place, hopefully I will not be making much to disturb others. But I want to say, if I'm doing it and you are praying, you don't have time to hear me. Because you are in the Spirit yourself and you are hearing what the Lord is saying to you. So there will be no disturbance. I hope that we will learn, and like, like you said, we really need to go into these songs so that we can know exactly as we are growing that we don't disturb others. Yeah, just have about two minutes. Two minutes. Until the day in which he was taken out, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles, whom he had chosen. In other words, that the, the brethren will be in a place where the commandments, yeah, in one accord, you know, will take off from there. So I just want everybody here to know that Theophilus is my name.
come, it's a gift from God, says the Lord God. And part of it will get you well, you'll see that the one that the Spirit of God, that God said you should yearn to have, praise the Lord, when we begin to break it down. Thank God. Hallelujah. And um, what I would want all of us to do is to let it down. Let the Holy Spirit take over. He's the one that will direct us on what to do and where to go. And if we listen to him, he never fails in his direction. He never fails in his promise. But it's for us to just be broken on him. Let's be broken and let him have his way. Then things will begin to fall. Praise the Lord. One of this I will have said is right in a way. There are some churches that we are not here to talk about that we are going to teach on how. Praise the Lord. We will talk about that. And for now, let the sheep and the and the and the goods go grow together until Christ comes. Praise the Lord.
If you're serving, I was trying to put, confess with the minister recently. I told him, I told him, it's not going to be finished. Yes, sir. I saw it. I, I, I saw went it. to the last office, I would have thought he was, she was digging it. Yeah. I looked at the assistant and told her, like, no, no, no. It, it, they're not going to beat me. I want to change my own to drag it because it's not going to Like, no. Those were the things that come out of fellowship. Why? Because we were connected towards the same purpose. When we came there, we came to worship. I don't know about you. Since these things started, I've only started to change our people at home church. I know there are some of you that would love to come. You can't come either to whatever reason, whatever, whatever, whatever. But as a pastor, I've been here and I saw and I, 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 I began to, the Holy Spirit began to teach me. My God, how big fellowship is. When I come to church, I don't see some of you. I, I, I try to do the dance of three or four of you together on Sunday or on Tuesday. Yeah. Now, I bring that here to underscore the point that these people came together with one purpose. They were expectant of Christ. But Christ and God had a purpose for this time. The purpose was to commence a New Testament church. And he was going to use an instrument. And what was that instrument? He never came. That is the gospel. The power of God unto salvation. Now, if you look at it, there was a conference of people. People came from different nations. But God will have to choose his initial believers from every nation. So, and it is imperative that before you can be saved, you must hear the gospel. So, the miracle of the day was that God has to empower those who are ready. The ability to speak human languages. Read that very well. The tongues here, not and good, were just expression of the gospel. So the ears of people came from different nations. Period. Now, that is not to say that the time we get to First Corinthians, when the church was now developing, another aspect of tongues. Him. And so along the way, as things happen, yes, I can see the pain of this. I will okay because you know these days I can tell one of the disadvantages of this time, this social distance and so on is that you are bombarded with so many information. You may maybe recently you have seen some things in you know churches that just abuse tongues. We set it on record in our serious church, we do not abuse tongues. Those of us who are here for that, we have fought this very meticulously. And by the grace of God, we will continue to exercise every gift of God with every meticulosity and by the fear of God. But what we're going to pray tonight, and I want to encourage every one of us, listen, of all my big friends that I was now sharing with you, there are some preachers that I actually admire most. If you are a pastor who is not Pentecostal and God is doing a big thing in your ministry, I admire them. Because these are people they don't even speak in tongues. The other day I told you about that. I was having a lunch with uh, Dr. Morgan. We cross in his church. It's where I first that you are this church. <laughs> Sigmund Church. How many of you have been there? You will pass down better yeah. by 45. Yeah. The cross only. <laughs> <laughs> the cross. And this guy is not a Pentecostal man. But there is a common denominator between him and maybe somebody like John Austin is a Pentecostal man. He had a big church, I'm not talking about John, the father. That is the between John and John. Yes. Now, John, the father, is Pentecostal. Don't you say? Big church. John Morgan never spoke in tongues. His father was a Baptist minister. God used him so big. But look at the secret of everything. The thing is, here, God used their unity. And he released a deed that worked, that brought people. It doesn't matter how God chooses to use you when you are devoted. 
And when you focus on Him, the gift He gives you, it may not be tongue speaking. But when God releases that gift, it will be a gift that will draw people to Christ. And that's what the Bible does. When you go to talk to another person, the Bible says the gift of the Spirit is given to everyone in the church to benefit or to profit. In other words, that's one thing. When you are devoted, there are certain things that God will give you. Tongues is just one or another. But you want to read more. That it, 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 you can know how, how, how warm my heart is in this. I learned so much as a pastor in this area. Sometimes I see things people do. Some people are not able to come to church, but their prayer has not diminished. Some people are giving like eight years when they are not in church. The church, you not come to church, they destroy them. And when you, when you see what God is using everyone for, faithfully, we will discover that when we pull that together, we are building a church that belongs to Christ. A church that when the Lord begins to do his work, people will begin to come. Not for sure. But because God is saving souls. I'm not talking about, you know, where people just come to just have fun and stuff like that. When all is said and done, Jesus Christ came to die that souls that be saved. And anything pointing towards that that does not glorify God or edify souls is out of the way. Just like Pastor Jesse said, there are so many things we may not be able to explain in this person this question because we need God to judge. You know, and when the master comes, he's coming to take a church that is without wrinkles, that is without spots. And that is what the Spirit of the Lord is praying us to become in our Savior's church. So I want to encourage you, you know, let's have the same, you know, the same focus. Christ, the crucified. Amen? Our focus is on Him. When we focus on Him, when we are faithful, my brother and sister, He will turn you to somebody that whatever that gives you, so begin to draw people to the kingdom of God. And on this note, we're going to pray tonight. I know we gave it at the time of 8.35. We will be five minutes extra, which will be done in the next. But let's go on our feet. And for the purpose of other time, we will continue the week chapter 2 on Sunday. And then next week, we will continue with the other two. So, Sunday, we will make a roundup on Acts chapter 2. I want us to pray. Now, the Lord has set up our church in a time like this for a greater season. But every one of us, we must be on the same accord. So we're going to pray tonight. The spirit behind this social distancing thing that might take a toll in the life of people, let us pray. That God will begin to deal with every spirit that is propagating the troubles that is all over the nations right now. If the Lord begin to declare, so Lord, this, this issue of virus that is causing social distancing, that is not allowing God's people to come together in one accord. I want to begin to pour the blood of Jesus upon those spirits. The Bible says that we must come by the blood of the Lamb and the blood of our testimony. Tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare that every powers of darkness that is taking advantage of coronavirus to separate people, to ensure that we cannot come together in fellowship, that is diminishing the power and the windfall of fellowshipping when come against those spirits of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray, begin to pray the word of Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare, my Lord and my God, every power that is coming to your power, every spirit that is coming to your spirit, that will not allow us to work together. Lord, we call that this will release our power in the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Most blessed day we have prayed. Amen. 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 Right now, most some people at home, that power of fellowship is that they should be in line with us right now. On Sunday, I said, I challenged, I said, maybe God forbid you are supposed to be online right now, but you are coming to go by a whole day. Maybe 
people are staying in, watching the soap opera, you know, watching some reruns of some stuff. The devil will play all kind of trick to ensure that God's people are not gathered together in one accord with one spirit. Because he knows that when we do that, the gift of God will come and the church will explode. Let us go into every world, wherever people are. Every disturbance, every element of distraction that will never allow people to join in this one accord that will bring the power of God. Let's begin to ask for somebody. Say, Lord, every spirit of distraction will come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that will not let somebody, child of God, correlate her mind and spirit with the spirit of Christ at a particular time. We come against you. We come against you in the name of Jesus. We come against you in the name of God. We come against you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Yeah. Every one of you who is here tonight, whether you are home or in church, the bottom line is that God got to give you your own bread and butter. There is always one prevailing gift that when it comes to your life, through it, the Lord will explode your spiritual power. I just mentioned to you, Jesus said, I was on the other side of the He never spoke tongues. But we know that the word of Christ is in rank, and that word is life. He said, The word that people are putting at their word, they are life. Miracles happen. I want to pray to the Lord as a non eligible Christian. Say, what? A gift that will distinguish me, that will make me to be a golden instrument in your hands. That is not that when people speak about it, people will mention me. No, release it to my life in this season. Because I'm studying Acts chapter 1 and 2, Lord. In that special blessing that will have for him, spiritual gifts that will make a difference, that will make me to be a difference in the kingdom, Lord, begin to release it to my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, my bread and butter spiritually, that will redefine me, that will have a very special place for me in the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak it tonight over my life, over the life of all these wonderful ones. In the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to receive the power of God upon your life. Receive the fullness of your spirit tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, descend tonight and lay your hands upon every one of us. In the name of Jesus. 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 Take 30 seconds to speak upon your life. And spend your time with Jesus. Whatever the contrast of your is between you and God. You are in fellowship tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Whenever God's people are gathered together in His presence, God is in the midst. Speak to the Lord tonight. Round up our special time with Jesus tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will follow your presence tonight in proxy and in presence in the name of Jesus. The Lord God, who knows where his children are. Last week on Sunday, we read about how the apostles who are not on the face and he knew where they were and he went in there. Tonight, I pray that the visitation of the feet of the Lord will come upon you in the name of Jesus. There is a big part that God has come you for your kingdom. Tonight, I need to like your bread and butter. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will deliver your bread and butter to you. In the wonderful name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. God is building His church. Every one of us has an essential part. Tonight, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will release our own special gifts that will make us to be different and very influential in the building of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Tonight, we have called upon the Lord by virtue of this opportunity. 
I pray that the Lord will hear your cry. Amen. Is there any private conversation? Are there answers that you are looking for to your questions? Because you have come tonight, because you have come with us on Facebook Live, may the Lord begin to release answers to all of your questions. Amen. In the present name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I pray. I want everyone who is out of this church to have this faith that following this season, not only will the Lord give us good health, but I pray that each of us that our destiny will continue in the right direction in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will be glorified. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This is well with us. Lord, I pray upon every offering tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray that our financial future shall be strong. Amen. So much wealth is going on around now. I pray, God, that we begin to direct our own wealth to us. In the word of the name of Jesus, in these seasons, some people will become financially buoyant. As many in this sanctuary, they will count us with their money. Father, we thank you tonight. Finally, I pray as we go to our text tonight, Father God, again, I am asking for a divine visitation. Receive the spirit of the Lord and let your life escalate for a better chance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give yourself a clap of the The Lord bless you and thank you for coming to church tonight. Those of you join us on YouTube, Facebook Live. The Lord bless you. It's a wonderful season. Continue to enjoy Jesus. Stay secure, stay safe. Amen. The heart of the Lord is upon those who belong to me, and He will keep you safe and secure in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Let us share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, be the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God is doing a new thing in my life. It is springing forth and shining on. The Lord will even make the way for me to win the wilderness. And we provide you with water in the basin. The Lord call me for Himself, and I will show forth His grace continually. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Wave to somebody. You know you cannot shake hands. Amen. Just wave to somebody and say, I appreciate you coming tonight.